What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Drive Talk Cars and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to save money changing your own rotors and pads on your Maserati Ghibli. All right, so brakes. They're something that, you know, we have to have. They are definitely a wear and tear uh, component of your car, but a lot of times people are afraid to tackle doing the brake job. And it's understandable, you know, we don't know a lot, but I'm here to show you that it's not that hard. Um, especially if you have the big brakes like I do on the Maserati, six pistons in the front, four in the back, but these type of brakes are very, very easy to change and it will save you a lot of money so let's jump into it all right so the tools that you're going to need are fairly simple you need a ratchet you can have a longer one or a shorter one for leverage punch tools you need a 10 hex socket a 5 hex socket and a 10 millimeter socket and a hammer and that's pretty much all you need all right so with your wheel off this is what you should see you have your caliper and then your rotor the first thing that we're going to do is disconnect the bracket right here. It holds the brake sensor and the brake line. We're going to take that off so we can move this back. So using the 10 millimeter, we're going to take this off. And these bolts are not typically tight. Alright, so now you can see the bracket can move. Next thing we're gonna do is take off the caliper. The caliper is held on by two bolts, one at the top, one at the bottom, and that's gonna be using the 10 hex socket. So these are torqued down, so there will be a little bit of uh, muscle you have to put on it to get it loose. Then there's another one down at the bottom. I like to loosen the top one first, keep the bottom one in, that way I can that way I can hold it when I'm releasing this one. So here are the brake pads right here. You have one on outside, inside, you have your retaining clip, you have a retaining bolt, and then you have these slide pins here. And this is the pin where the pads slide across. So first thing we're going to do is punch out the top pin and then the bottom pin and that will release this bracket here or clamp. It's just tension and then it comes right off. So using a hammer, just punch that right out and then if you push down on the retaining clamp you can see the pin gets loose and then you can slide it out and then that becomes loose then you can take that right off so here's your pin and then here's your bracket these two things will be replaced uh, with the new hardware you have this pin down here there you have it and to remove this bolt right here you need a 13 millimeter socket all right we got that loose we can throw it onto the power tool here all right, we have our bolt out. Then we can take this out here. You can use some pliers if you need to. Might be kind of hard to get out because it has been in there for some time and the dirt and all that, that accumulates. All right, so you can see all the dirt build up and that's why it's so hard to get out. There we go. Got it out. So now you can see we have the brakes exposed. All right, so nine times out of 10, your brake pads are going to be in further than you need them to be, and you have to squeeze them out and compress the pistons on the left and the right side, or inner and outer side of the caliper. Now, sometimes you can do this with your hand, grab it and push it back. And sometimes you cannot. So if you can't do that, then I just take a screwdriver, especially if I'm replacing the rotor. So I don't mind damaging it. But if you're not replacing it, you want to find alternate method to where you don't destroy your rotor. But I'm just going to push back a little bit just to compress the calipers. 
and then you can see your brake pads can come out now. Like so. So these brake pads don't look that bad. Still has some life on it. The wear on them are pretty even. All right, so let's take a look in inside here. You can see the calipers are not fully in. So we want to push those in to where they're flush with the caliper. All right, now that we have the brake pads out, we're going to use our T-Hex socket. Take off the two bolts, one up here, one down here. All right, remember to hold your caliper. So now this whole assembly can come off like that. What I like to do is take a bungee cord, wrap it around here, find a spot to wrap it. All right, so now it's up and out the way and I can access the rotor without any issues. So next thing we're gonna do is take the rotor off. The rotor is being held on by this bolt here. It is a five hex socket. So just put that in there and there you go. Not too hard, so don't expect it to be. Take this bolt out and then your rotor is ready to come off. Now, the rotor can be difficult to come off. Sometimes it, you know, locks to your wheel hub so it's okay to take a hammer to it being that you're going to be replacing the rotor anyway i usually just tap around the hub here just to kind of break up some of that uh, rust that may have accumulated There you go. Rotor is off. If you want to avoid having that difficulty uh, in the future, you can sand this down with a wire brush. And they have some anti-seize paste. I don't have any at the moment, but I just usually clean it up with my wire brush. All right, so we got our new rotor here. We just put that back on. Make sure you line up your holes and you definitely need to make sure you know where the hole is for the retaining bolt. And this just has to be wrist tight, you don't have to overdo it. All right, so that's it for the rotor. Once you get that on and then your retaining bolt, you're done with the rotor. Now the next step is just to put the caliper back on and then insert your pads. But before I put the caliper back on, I like to clean it up a little bit. As you can see, there's a lot of collection of dirt in here. Just wiping away a little bit. All right, so now we can take the caliper down, put it back on the bracket, and we should be good to go. Then we do another little cleaning, just to you know get the dirt off while you have the wheel off. All right, so we got that back on there. Then we just tighten it up. So now these bolts are torqued. So you wanna make sure that you torque it down to the proper torque. So the bolt here, I'm gonna put a little degreaser on, clean it up since it's not being replaced. All right, so I'm gonna clean my caliper a little bit while we have it off. All right, so we have the new brakes here. One side is gonna have the sensor and one side is not. So this side here is for the passenger. The other side with the sensor is for the driver's side. 
So as you can see, how much meat is on there or pad. It does come with the anti-squilling padding on the back, so you don't have to oil this part if you don't want to. I'm not, but I will oil these parts here. I say oil, but not really oil, but put the, the brake grease right here and on this side and on both sides. Right here, right here. As I mentioned before, we have new hardware. So we have our new retaining clips and we have our new pins. All right, so we're about to put the brake pads back in. You will notice that one side is slanted and one side is not. And that's on both brake pads. So you wanna make sure that you put the brake pads on to where the slanted sides are facing up. So these little slants, as you can see there, are facing upward. Another way to make sure that you have it in the right way is just to look at your brake pads when you take them out to see the orientation in which they came out. And then just put the new ones in the same way. If you experience where they won't go in, that means your calipers are not pushed back far enough. So typically what you could do is use your old pad, put it in there, and then squeeze it to where it's flush. And then you can do that on the other side here and then squeeze them back. So let's grease up these here on the side here and then we can insert. So I'm using brake parts lubricant. It's got ceramic solids in it. Supposedly helps with the noise. But you can use any brake grease that you want. You wanna make sure you do not get it on the pad. All right, now we put that in there. All right, that goes in there like a glove. All right, then we're gonna take the other side here, lube it up. All right, you put this in there. There we go. Then we put our bolt back in. 13 millimeter bolt. All right. Now this isn't torqued. This is pretty much hand tight. Get it on there nice and snug. All right. All right, next we just put our pins back in. These are the new ones. I think I'm gonna put a little grease on it. Not too much, cause it's gonna spread. So to get that in, just hit the back with the hammer. You can use a punch pin if you like. Now that we have the pin in, we can put our retaining clip in there. Put a little grease on it. Right in here where the pin goes, on this part here where it touches the pads, we'll put it up here as well. All right. There we go. Let me just tap this in the same way and we should be good to go. All right, once it's flush, and you can see the other side of the pin, don't forget to put your bracket back. All right, bracket is back. Only thing left to do is to torque down your caliper bolts. Torque them down to 118 foot-pounds of torque. So we finished the front. The rear is the only thing left now. Uh, it's pretty much the same procedure. The only thing that's different is the bolts are regular bolts, they're not hex, and there's no bolt for the retaining clip. So let's get started. All right, as you can see, this is the bolt that's holding on the caliper. So we have two of those, one right there, one down here, and we have to remove those. There's no bracket that we need to remove for the holes, so we're good on that. So once we get those two off, then you're good to go. 
Just like the front, first thing we're gonna do is remove the brake pads. They're held in with the, the pins and then the clip, just like the front. All right, just like before, we're gonna try to put some pressure on the pin, I mean on the clip. That way you can pull the pin out like that. Then your clip is released. Remember the orientation, pretty much the same. And now our brake pads are exposed. Remember why you have the old rotor and the old brake pads, you can use this time to compress the calipers. Now we can take the old pads out. They're pretty worn. Now we have the pads out, we're gonna take out the two bolts holding the caliper in. And we're using a size 14 millimeter. All right, so that's the bolt, one of the bolts. Now we're gonna take out the bottom one. All right, caliper's off. Now we're gonna hang this like we did before. So like the front one, there's another screw that's holding the caliper on. All right, we're using the same five hex bit to remove the retaining screw. All right, with that off, we're gonna take off the rotor. All right, after a little PB blast and a swift hit, the rotor is now coming off. And there you go. So just like the front, it kind of binds to this over time. So I'm gonna scrape it down. I need to get some anti-seize paste so I can put this on here and don't have this problem again. So here is your drum brake. These shoes can be replaced as well over time. They don't really wear down that much because you're not using them for braking power, just for as an emergency parking brake. Emergency brake, parking brake, whatever you want to call it. But these really don't go bad too often, but they are replaceable. All right, we have our new rear rotor. Put this on. Just like the front, we want to match the holes. Make sure we have the hole lined up for the retaining screw. All right, don't have to super tighten it. Just make sure that it's tight enough. So now we have that on there. So just like I did in the front, I'm gonna clean up the caliper. That way uh, we have a fresh clean surface. All right, so now we can put the caliper back on. All right, so we have the new pads. This side didn't have any sensor, so we'll pick the one without the sensor, obviously. Uh, for these, you see both sides are tapered, so it doesn't matter what side goes down. All right, just like before, I'm gonna grease it up on this part here, making sure not to get on the pad. This has the backing, so you don't have to put the grease on there. It did come with these whole fillers, so make sure you take those out. All right, let's slide it in there. Should slide right in there. Maybe the calipers, the pistons are not all the way pressed. Just like the front, we have new hardware, new clips, new pins. So we're gonna put the bottom one in, give it a little lubrication. All right, gonna put this down, the pin in. All right, then we have our other pin here. I'm gonna give it a little, little coating. Gotta come from underneath here and then through before we push it all the way. Put a little tension on it. All right. Now all we have to do is hammer it in. Even though it's a flat surface, I like to use the punch just so 
I'm not tearing up nothing on my caliper, but it is awkward. All right, just coming through. Just gotta put a little bit more juice on it. All right, so we got everything new. New pins, hardware, and everything is looking good. All right, so here is the brake pad sensor. It's just a little tab. Pull up on that. Then you pull this out like that. Put that to the side. And then this slides onto a little bracket here. There you go. And then that comes off like that. Then you can see it's going to the inner pad. So make sure that when you replace the new pad, you put that in the inner pad just like this. So the front sensor is similar to the rear sensor. It's got a clip and you just undo that and you're good to go. Everything else is the same as the passenger front side. So the next step is to break in the brakes which is basically introducing the new pads and the new rotors together um, over a series of heating them up, cooling them down, heating them up, cooling them down. And then after that, job is done. So if you like this video, please give me that thumbs up. Check out these videos over here. And remember, do it until you can. Until next time, I'm out.